Finding flags doesn't get you hired as a SOC analyst. Now, I know that might sound weird because CTFs, aka capture the flags, are supposed to help build your skills, right? But there is a massive gap between hunting the flags and actually doing the job. The skill that gets you hired, most people don't actually practice it. If this is the first time that we're meeting, hello, my name is Steven, and I've been working in cybersecurity for almost a decade, mainly in security operations. I run the MyD for SOC community, where I train aspiring SOC analysts through hands-on investigations. Over the years, I've seen a pattern in how some people tackle CTFs. They will start clicking around, running random queries, hoping that they'll stumble upon a flag, and don't get me wrong, sometimes it works. But you're not building a methodology you can actually use in a real job. So if that sounds like you, here is what I would recommend that you do instead. Try and treat it like a real investigation. Before you touch anything, ask yourself, what am I looking for? If this were a real alert in a SOC, what would my initial hypothesis be? Go ahead and write that down. And then start with the basics. What hosts were involved? What about the users? What is the timeline? Don't just jump straight into advanced hunting queries. You do want to build context first. Most CTFs do hide flags in places that you would just naturally look. Second thing is, document as you go. Don't wait until the end to write your report. Keep notes on every query that you ran, every finding, and every dead end. Because when you go back later, <laughs> you are going to forget why you made a certain decision. And if you ever have to present your work or even explain it in an interview, you need to be able to walk through your thought process. Third, Try and map your findings to the MITRE ATT&CK framework. When you find something suspicious, don't just say, found malicious PowerShell. Instead, identify what tactic that was. Was it initial access? Execution? Persistence? This builds the habit of thinking in frameworks, which a lot of employers like to see. Last, time box your rabbit holes. If you have been stuck on one flag for hours and you're not making any progress, if you do have the ability to, Go and move on. Come back to it later. In a real SOC, you can't really spend all day with one alert while 10 others are piling in. Practice triaging and prioritizing now. So the next time that you do a CTF, any CTF, approach it like you've already been working in a SOC. Build the habit now so when you are in an interview and they ask you how would you investigate something, you're no longer just guessing. You've already done it dozens of times. And that's the approach that we use in our monthly CTF inside the MyD for SOC community. But we do take it a step further. Every month, we are running a new CTF. And the previous one did have 25 flags where you are working as a SOC analyst investigating suspicious activity using KQL, where the objective was to identify how the attacker got in and what occurred afterwards. You'll need to find things like initial access vectors, persistence mechanisms, and lateral movement techniques. But here's the thing, finding the flags is only half of it. You do need to document everything in an investigation report. So what did you find? How did you find it? What's your evidence? What MITRE attack techniques did the attacker use? And what is your recommendation? And if you place first, you are doing a 15 to 30 minute debrief in front of the community where you'll be walking everyone through your methodology, how you approached the investigation, where you got stuck, what pivots you made, and what you learned. Now, some might say that this is overkill, but the reality here is that when you do land your first SOC role, you are going to have to write tickets, brief your senior analyst, and explain why you escalated something. If you can't communicate your findings clearly, the technical skills, they don't matter as much as you think. Now, I know not everyone who joins the CTF is going to place first, but you are still getting the practice. You are working through a real investigation scenario, writing a report, and building up your methodology. And when it's all over, I release a full walkthrough, showing how I went through every single flag, step by step, why I searched for what I searched for, what I was thinking at each stage. So if you get stuck, you can then go back and see where you went wrong. If you missed a flag entirely, you can now learn a new technique. And if you are brand new and didn't know where to start, now you can follow along with the walkthrough and build up your own skills and methodology for the next month CTF. Let me be direct about why I structured my CTFs like this. 
It's because I've seen people get rejected from sock rolls not because they weren't technical. They got rejected because they couldn't explain their thought process clearly in an interview. They couldn't walk through how they would investigate an alert. They couldn't articulate why they made certain decisions. Now, technical skills, they will get you in the door, but communication and documentation skills get you the offer. When you're in an interview and they ask, walk me through how you would investigate a brute force alert, you need to be able to explain your thought process out loud. Not just say, yeah, I checked the logs, <laughs> but actually walk them through your methodology like you're already on the team. And that right there is what my debrief requirement builds. You're practicing explaining your work under pressure, in front of people, getting comfortable defending your findings. And the report requirement, that's building the skill of documenting what you did so someone else can pick it up later. Because in a real SOC environment, you're not the only analyst, or at least I hope not. Your documentation needs to be clear enough that the next shift can read your notes and understand what happened. So if you want to practice this approach in a structured environment with feedback, that's what the monthly CTFs inside the MyD for SOC community is for. You're not just hunting for flags, you're building up an investigative methodology, writing reports, and if you place first, you're presenting your findings to the community. You'll also be getting access to the SOC simulator as well, which will include both Microsoft Sentinel and Splunk, a 90-day structured SOC analyst program, and an internship opportunity if you choose to apply. If you are not ready to join yet, that's completely okay. Take what I taught you in the beginning of this video and apply it to free CTFs or labs from Cyber Defenders or Blue Team Labs online, just to name a few. Start building that methodology now because the technical skills are only half of what you need. That is it for the video and I hope that you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.